Hey ladies, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Mrs. Emily Paints and I'm back with another story time. This is a story about how I helped a man find his family after being in a coma. Okay, so this is a really, 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 really crazy story, you guys. And I have not talked about this story much because I just felt good about it deep down inside that I, I didn't really necessarily felt like I had to be telling people I did this for this guy or I did that. But one time I did say the story to like my family, like a group of family that was together um, back in California. And they were just like, what? My mom's like, you did that? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, you never tell me anything. <laughs> Point is, it's time to speak about the story. I feel like it's a very, very nice story and it can inspire a lot of you to be good people <laughs> and to do something kind for others, especially when they need it. So this guy, his name was Hector. And um, I used to go out to Hemet, California, and he used to hang around there all the time. So one time, you know, like I started, you know, just curiosity asking questions like about his life because you can tell that he was having like issues. I mean, he, he was homeless, like he had a bike and everything. Like he just chilled there. He was just that cool guy around there, you know. And uh, so I started asking him questions like, what, well, like, you know. And he started talking to me. It was so sad, you guys. Like, he started telling me how he used to have his family. He had a five-year-old daughter and all this stuff. And I'm like, so where are they? So he started telling me how he got into an accident. And then he got into a coma. And then when he woke up, his family was not there anymore. And I was like, how? And that's when he started telling me was because, like, they got separated before and everything. So after, like, the accident, the coma, like, they just assumed probably that he was just, like, out of the picture. But no, like, he was in a coma. So 10 years later, this was me helping him 10 years later, back in 2015, I believe. And I told him, so, like, have you ever tried looking for them or anything? And he was just like, well, I wouldn't even know where to start. So I told him, what about, like, social media? Like, what if you, you know, find your ex-wife and then reconnect with your daughter? And then he's just like, we can do that? And I'm like, yeah. So it just kicked into me and I'm just like, I have to help this guy. <laughs> so I started, like, doing my research like crazy. And I talked about this story on TikTok yesterday or the day before that. Here's my TikTok, follow me, <laughs> follow me on Instagram too. So I talked about this on TikTok already and I started looking for his ex-wife and it took me like a whole week to find this lady, you guys. And I did message her, I was like, hey, like Hector's here. Um, He's trying to reconnect with his daughter and just like, can you answer, can you respond? Like he's just really trying to find his family. He's been in a coma and all this stuff, you know? And the lady tells me like, what? So she called, like she, no, I'm like, I gave her my number and then she calls later on, I forgot what time, and he talks to her, he gets to talk to her about the plans and how they're gonna like meet up to see the daughter and what happened and just all the crazy stuff. And so they ended up telling him like, oh, you can fly over here to San Francisco because they were all the way in San Francisco, you guys. So he flew over for her 15th birthday, his daughter's 15th birthday. And I, they sent me the video, which I couldn't find sadly, but in the video, like you can see she's like behind her cake and stuff and he comes and it's like such an emotional moment. And I was like, mm, you know? And of course, like his ex-wife sent me like a message saying that, oh, like we love Hector and we missed him and we care for him, but life goes on and you know, things changed and, and we couldn't just sit around and wait for him. So life goes on, basically saying she moved on. And I understand that. I mean, she had no idea about what happened, <laughs> which is insane and sad. So uh, she just told me that thank you and God bless you and I can't believe it and all, all this stuff, you know. And I just felt like so good deep inside because I'm like, damn, like I really did something really, really good for this guy. And... I was proud of myself and I never really like felt like flexing that on people or recording or filming anything for anyone to see like people do on social media because I just felt like if I'm gonna do something good I should just keep it to myself you know and just do good but now I'm coming out on here and telling you guys about this experience and this 
story because I want to inspire you guys into doing something nice for people without even having to like flex it at the time. This was back in 2015, it's 2021. <laughs> so I just want you guys to know that it's okay to be a good person and help others and you know, be good. <laughs> But yeah, that's the story, you guys. It looks like he's doing better. I haven't seen his Facebook active, which I looked at today, earlier this morning, and I was like, let me just check if he's, like, been active lately. And no. I was like, well, I don't know, maybe he's off of social media or whatever. But yeah, um, he looked like he was doing better. He looked like he moved to San Francisco. And things looked good for him. I checked up on his ex-wife too because I still had her on like my old Facebook. And it looks like they're doing good. So I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, that is that story. There's also another little story which I'll just add on to here since it's like a short little video. Um, let me know if you guys, in, like let me know in the comments down below if you guys like these videos. Because I can talk about so many situations that I've never ever ever mentioned to anyone. And they're just up here. <laughs> And I can tell you guys about them, but one time there's this place called the Valley Mall in California and I was getting out of school. I was going to cosmetology school back in the day and there was a man that looked like he came, he just came to the US. Like he looked like he just got here. We had his stuff with him and everything. He was telling me like, oh, like... Um, I'm trying to buy food like do you like nothing is in it all like do you have any money I can have or something to buy something to eat because I just got here from I forgot where he said and I know that there are a lot of people that scam out there and I'm a victim of that if you guys haven't seen my previous video <laughs> but I was scammed <laughs> that's another story but yeah, so I'm aware of those people that scam you for your money, like saying that they just got here from like Mexico or from wherever and it's a lie. They just want your money. So I looked at this guy and I'm just like, oh, like you're trying to buy something to eat. He's like, yeah, like I just I just got here and um, I don't have anywhere to go or anyone. And at the time I wasn't really working, working. So I was just going to school and it was just going to be difficult for me to try to help to help the guy. So I told him, like, you know what, like, I have a couple bucks, do you want to get something to eat? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, but I'll go in there with you and pay for your food to make sure he's buying food. So I didn't tell him that, but, you know, in my head. So we go in there, and he's, like, so grateful, and he's just like, oh, my God, like, thank you. Like, you're the first person that says yes. He's like, I've been asking people around, like, the whole day, and nobody, nobody, nobody gave him money for food. <laughs> you guys, that's so effed up. So, we go in there and it's like this chicken place and, oh, you guys, that chicken is so good. I miss California. <laughs> so, we go into that place and I get him his food and the person that's like, uh, the, uh, what are they called? The cashier. The cashier was just looking at me like, do you need help? <laughs> because the guy looked like, you know, like he was homeless, like he had like his bags and everything and he looked like dirty, he had a hat, you know, like everything. So the guy was just looking at me like, are you being held hostage? <laughs> and I felt so bad, but I just like told him, you know, like choose whatever you want to eat. So the money that I had for my lunch, the money that I had for my lunch I used to buy his food. And I bought him his food, whatever he wanted to get, and then I just told him like, I gotta go. So I left. And I didn't eat lunch that day, but I was okay with it because I felt so bad. But yeah, you guys, that's the first and only time that I ever saw that guy. But I hope that this can inspire you guys to do something good. Because regardless if this guy was just trying to ask money just to, like, have it, not to actually need it and use it. Even if a person did not really need that money... And they were just asking just to spend it or whatever. What counts is your intentions, if you know what I mean. So for me, it was like, okay, whether this guy's trying to scam me or not, it's my good intentions that matter. Like, I'm helping this guy because it's coming from my heart. So whatever he does with his money, that's it, you know? Like, I did it with good intentions, so I feel good. I don't care if he's trying to scam me. 
and that's what matters but yeah you guys hopefully this could inspire you to you know do something good out there every time you guys are out in the street or see street vendors or anyone but yeah um these are pretty much my little stories and i hope you guys have a good day and i'll see you guys next time comment comment be good at the bottom comment be good so that i know that you're a real one and you watch the whole video <laughs> and i'll see you guys in the next one